In this video, we'll prove that the sum of two rational numbers is well defined. So let's review our construction of the rational numbers. Recall that we begin by distinguishing fractions from rational numbers. So a fraction is an actual ratio of an integer and a natural number. And we'll distinguish them from rational numbers for now by writing fractions with the double bar between the numerator and denominator. So we'll let m over n and p over q be fractions. And we say that those are equivalent fractions if m times q is equal to n times p. In that case, we write that m over n is equivalent to p over q by using the triple equal sign there. So if we have an integer m and a natural number n, then we define the rational number m over n, written with the single bar between the numerator and denominator, as the set of all fractions that are equivalent to the fraction m over n. So we're writing, we're defining a rational number as the set, the infinitely large set of um, equivalent fractions. So fractions that are equivalent to the fraction m over n. Okay, then of course, q, the rational numbers, is just the set of all uh, rational numbers as we've defined them there. Okay, so using these definitions, we can say that the rational number m over n is equal to the rational number p over q if and only if m times q is equal to n times p. And so we have infinitely many different representations for every rational number. Okay, so for example, all of the fractions you see there, and now we're going to just write fractions with a single bar. Uh, all these fractions, 1 half, 2 quarters, 3 sixths, 4 eighths, 5 tenths, those all name the same rational number. Okay, but that introduces a problem. The problem is we need to make sure that the result of the operations and relations we use when we're working with rational numbers don't depend on the particular choice of names we use. So let's see how that works itself out in the context of addition. So recall that if we have two fractions f1 and f2, two rational numbers f1 and f2, and if we write f1 is m over n and f2 is p over q, then the sum of f1 and f2 is given by the formula mq plus np over nq. Okay, so that's just the standard way of adding fractions. Now notice that the definition said if we write f1 as m over n, and if we write f2 as p over q. Okay, as we got just done talking about a, a minute ago, the trouble is that there are infinitely many different ways to do this. So we can make infinitely many different choices of fractional names for the rational numbers f1 and f2. Okay. So the question is, what if we apply this definition using one choice of fractions for f1 and f2, and somebody else applies the definition of the sum using a different choice of equivalent fractions? Well, of course, one of our axioms for addition, and just an ordinary, intuitive, everyday property of addition, is that it has a unique result. The sum of two elements in an order field has to be unique. So th what that means here is that if I choose two, a set of names for f1 and f2 and add them together, I better get the same rational number as somebody else who chooses a different set of names for f1 and f2. Okay, So the sum of the two elements in the ordered field had better be the same. It has to be unique. And so whenever we add two equivalent pairs of fractions, we have to add with a we have to end with equivalent fractions as the result of the sum. So another way of putting that in sum is that addition has to be well defined. Okay, so our theorem here that we're going to prove is that if we have two fractions, two rational numbers f1 and f2, that the sum is indeed well defined. So let's say we have uh, f1 and f2 rational numbers, and let's suppose that we start with fractional name m1 over n1 for f1 and p1 over q1 for f2. Okay, with those representations, our sum f1 plus f2 is going to look like m1 q1 plus n1 p1 over n1 q1. And then if we have two different names, uh, m2 over n2 for f1 and p2 over q2 for f2, and we add those together, then our with those representations, our sum is going to look like m2q2 plus n2p2 over n2q2. 
And to prove that f1 plus f2 is well defined, we have to show that even with those two different representations for the fractions and the resulting uh, appearance of difference between the sums, that they're actually the same. Okay, so we want to prove that m1q1 plus n1p1 over n1q1 is equal to m2q2 plus n2p2 over n2q2. Of course, given that m1 over n1 is equal to m2 over n2, and given that p1 over q1 is equal to p2 over q2. Now, given our definition for equality for rational numbers, we have to prove the following. So if we want to prove that that f1 plus f2 is equal, those two rational numbers shown there are equal, what we have to show is that n2 times q2, all of that times the quantity m1q1 plus n1p1, is equal to n1q1 times the quantity m2q2 plus n2p2. So we're just applying our cross multiplication definition of equality to uh, the formula for the sum there. So we have to prove that line given that m1n2 is equal to m2n1 and p1q2 is equal to p2q1. Okay. So let's assume then that m1n2 is equal to m2n1 and let's assume that p1q2 is equal to p2q1. Let's start with the left hand side of the equation that we have to show is true. So we'll start with n2q2 times the quantity m1q1 plus n1p1 and we'll begin by just multiplying through using this distributive property. We'll multiply n2q2 times each term in that sum. So we get on the right hand side n2q2 m1q1 plus n2q2 n1p1. Let's rearrange that a little bit. So we'll write that then as m1n2 times q1q2 plus n1n2 times p1q2. So you can see that each of the four terms in the product there is in the corresponding term in the sum above. And now we're going to use our equalities. We know that m1n2 is equal to m2n1. So we replace it there. And we know that p1q2 is equal to p2q1. So we replace it at the end on the right hand side. Now we can rearrange that again. So we can write that as m2q2 times n1q1 plus n2p2 times n1q1 using the commutative and associative properties of multiplication. And now you can see that each term has a factor of n1q1. Each term in the sum has a factor of n1q1, so we factor that out. And we get that our left-hand side there that we began with is equal to n1q1 times the quantity m2q2 plus n2p2. Okay, so that's a lot of calculations, a lot of subscripts and p's and q's and m's and n's. What does it show? Okay, we've proven this. And if you recall, that is equivalent to saying that our two sums are equal, our two fractional sums. So this is exactly the definition of m1q1 plus n1p1 over n1q1 being equal to m2q2 plus n2p2 over n2q2. Okay, so that is exactly means that m1 over n1 plus p1 over q1 is equal to m2 over n2 plus p2 over q2. Okay, and that's exactly what we had to show to demonstrate that addition was well defined. Okay, so f1 plus f2 gives us the same result regardless of which representations we use for f1 and f2. Okay, and that exactly means that f1 plus f2 is well defined. That concludes this video. Thanks for listening.